The project challenges map can be accessed from our main page under the menu item project documents. So I'll click on that. Challenges map link is right there. And it opens our, the PDF of the layout in a new window. So the project challenges map was created by our project team to really call attention to the key challenges early on in the project development process. We created it to help the public identify any key issues or challenges that they might see um, on a daily basis or have identified in the past that they would want to leave a comment on. And that can be done through our comment map at our project website. The layout also has a legend that identifies different shading and symbols used on the map and various points of interest along the corridor in purple here, such as schools, businesses, churches, restaurants. And also the traffic information is another key item to point out in the legend. And you'll see that the traffic information symbols are shown here at all of the intersections along our corridor, but there's a couple extra here at Jaquard, Dodd, and Holyoke. And I'll get to that in a second. The callouts with the light blue around them identify specific locations of key challenges uh, related to right-of-way, pedestrian and bike safety, um, potential impacts to properties, steep terrain, uh, railroad impacts. We also have identified our reconstruction limits and our project resurfacing limits. And then over in this side of the layout, scroll over here, we do have a box that identifies more generic challenges that could be corridor-wide or not specific to a location that some of these other callouts are specific to. So we've collected traffic data in early spring and our team is right now looking at future traffic projections of this data 20 years into the future and in looking at that we need to evaluate what the future intersection control might look like at these intersections and as you can see there is a level of service symbol here in the legend. I can zoom in on that a little bit. And the level of service really means what, what type of delay is experienced in both the AM and PM peak hours at these three main intersections based on our existing volumes. So while level of service kind of depends on the person and what they might experience, in general for the intersection during those AM and PM peak hours, we've got AM and PM. So the top half is AM, bottom half is PM in each of these three symbols. And it describes what types of delays there are. So as you can see, right now at Jaquard and Holyoke, those delays really aren't bad. Um, they're pretty much free-flowing. And then minimal delays here at Dodd Boulevard. But looking into the future at these three intersections, we really want to focus on choosing um, the intersection control that's not only warranted, but what makes the most sense for the intersection. Dodd Boulevard is a county road, and we will be partnering and working with Dakota County on the best solution for future intersection control at that intersection. So while we look through those future volume numbers and look at what, we, what might be the best intersection control, we really want feedback on what you might experience at these intersections today and any thoughts you might have on what that intersection control could look like in the future. Another key challenge for this project is providing safe transportation for all modes of transportation, including pedestrians and bicycles in addition to motorists. And with Lakeville South High School, we've also got a middle school and elementary school here. We really want to make sure we have a focus on pedestrian safety, especially those who might be riding bike to school or walking to school and looking at ways we can improve that with our corridor project. And we'll be evaluating specifically safety in the uh, school zone here right near Lakeville South High School, which is right off the project corridor on 210th Street. And while balancing those needs for all those modes of transportation, we'd like your feedback on what you've experienced out on the corridor, whether you're a pedestrian or a bicyclist or motorist, and having those interactions with different modes of transportation. We'd also be interested in hearing what type of improvement might be the most beneficial, not only for motorists, but also for pedestrians and bicycles as well. One goal of this project is to limit property impacts while balancing the need for roadway widening and trail improvements as discussed previously. And 
some of the challenges identified with providing that widening and providing those different modes of transportation with the corridor improvements are what the widening may impact, such as tree screening, some steep, steep terrain along the project corridor. So we pointed those out um, at various locations for where we felt those physical features might be difficult with the widening. We've also acknowledged that access during construction may be a challenge, especially for those whose main and only access is right off of 210th Street. So we do, we do have driveway entrances identified on the project corridor map for those who may have a single point of access to 210th Street. Another challenge we've identified is coordinating uh, rail crossing improvements here. Uh, right at the Canadian Pacific Progressive Rail Line. And we do know that it's quite a bumpy ride in that area right now. So really the challenge there is coordination with the railroad company and just making sure that this is incorporated to provide a nice smooth corridor once the project is complete. We do also recognize that there will be other construction in the area um, while this project construction is going on in 2022. And, um, that being potentially CASA 70, um, any work that's com being completed on that project or other projects in the area um, could be a challenge with this project and maintaining um, and making sure that there is access for all residents and to the schools at all times. And lastly, one of the most unforeseen project challenges thus far on the project would be COVID-19 and its impacts to our ability to talk with you face-to-face -face at this time and really get feedback directly from the public and the community of Lakeville. So hopefully throughout our virtual open house and our project outreach, we'll be able to gather that feedback just as well, if not better than we would have in person. And again, we really encourage you to utilize all of the ways that you can contribute your feedback to the project. And we encourage your comments and questions as we work towards our design and a final product.